with it, I'll be tripping off. How fast they get with it, I'll be tripping off. How fast they get with it, I'll be tripping off. How fast they get with it, I'll be tripping off. How fast they get with it, get with it, get with it. Yeah, this is this is me responding to y'all responses about this Dick Gregory and Michael Jordan topic that I was asking y'all about earlier. You know what I mean? Um, throughout the days, you know what I'm saying? I got a couple of views on here, like eighty thousand, and that's kind of like weird to me because don't nobody listen to me. And now all of a sudden, I'm talking about Michael Jordan, what Dick Gregory say. You know what I mean? And people interested in that topic. But I just wanted to respond to some of y'all ignorant people. Because <laughs> y'all funny, yo. I woke up and seeing all these comments on here, yo, and started tripping, yo. Y'all, it's crazy. This is interesting. And it is fun to me. You know what I mean? I'm just sitting here at work. See, I be at work. You know what I mean? And then um, I go on YouTube and be listening to people and stuff like that. And it's just fun, yo. And I'm just... You know, I want I want to engage this fun topic. It is just making me laugh, and we go check out some of these stupid people that we <laughs> and they stupid comments, and we just go and laugh together and, and have fun. You know what I mean? And that's what I like to do anyway. So let's let's go. Look at me, <laughs> Shorty down here said my melon was popping. She said. Charlie Baltimore said my melanin was popping and I asked her what does that mean? Is that a bad thing? And um she didn't really respond. I don't know what that meant. But I hope it ain't really too bad because, you know, I like my melanin. You know what I mean? And I like my I call it my blackberry my blackberryness. You know what I'm saying? I know some of y'all gonna take the time and trip off of my Precious dark complexion and say comments like somebody said previously, I look like Draymond Green. And I don't take that as an offense. I don't care. In my opinion, I mean, I don't, I don't get too much hate. See, like, the camera be all up in my face like this most of the time. You know what I mean? But when you, when you look at me like the way you're supposed to look at me, like at a distance, you know what I'm saying? Give me like my three feet. Yeah. They be on it. Sorry. I'm just tripping. Anyway. Let's get back to some of these questions. He said, uh, one of these people said that uh, could he been talking about Michael Jordan's father because he did get killed sleeping in his car. And, and that's valid. You know what I mean? Because I looked that up. Investigators admit they don't have much to go on. They're certain that James Jordan, the father of NBA superstar Michael Jordan, was murdered. The only thing we know uh, is that the cause of death was a single gunshot wound to the chest that severed the aorta. A fisherman found Jordan's body floating in this creek near Bennettsville, South Carolina, August 3rd. But officials had no idea who it was at the time. Two days later, on August 5th, Jordan's candy apple red Lexus 400 was found about 60 miles away in this wooded area near Fayetteville, North Carolina. It had been stripped and vandalized, and it took a week for investigators to trace it back to Jordan. That's when South Carolina authorities began to suspect that the John Doe in their morgue was in fact James Jordan. That they did have a body, and at that point, we started trying to uh, find the dental records and so forth to go down to Bennettsville to uh, see if it might be Mr. Jordan. Of course, we were guessing and hoping and whatever at this point, but it turned out that it was. The 57-year-old Jordan was last seen in Wilmington, North Carolina, July 22nd. There were no signs of blood or struggle found near his car, leaving investigators not only to question why, but where he was killed. The body was close to a bridge, but that's uh, certainly not uh, an absolute indicator that the body would have gone in at that point. The FBI says the time lapse between Jordan's murder and the discovery of the body makes the case even more difficult. Right now, they have no suspect and no... 
And adding to the difficulty is the fact that Jordan's family never filed a missing persons report. Investigators only uh, found out that he was missing when they traced the car to him yesterday. And uh, something else that could possibly hinder their investigation, uh, Jordan's body was cremated. The coroner says he had no idea and uh, went ahead and cremated the body uh, since he had no missing persons reports in North Carolina or South Carolina fitting uh, Jordan's description. So there are a lot more questions right now about Jordan's death than answers. Back to you, Harold and Ann. All right. All right. And, and Michael Jordan, you know, like, that happened, I think I was like 13. I'm not even sure exactly when that happened. It was not 13. It was just like 93 or like 92. But I was young and I wasn't really saying all the elements to it, but it was kind of like crazy because his father got cremated. You know what I'm saying? Without no permission or nothing like that. He just cremated Michael Jordan's father without any, you know what I'm saying, permission. And they just did it. You know what I mean? And and that's kind of crazy. But um, that's valid. That's what I wanted to say. That's a valid statement that, that he could have been talking about Michael Jordan's father and not Michael Jordan. But... Like I like to always put the other side to it. Uh, he could have been talking about Michael Jordan because he also said in another video that Michael Jordan had a gambling problem. I said way back then, a lot of us knew that they had caught Michael Jordan broke. Michael Jordan ain't got a quarter, man. That's the game they play. Mm. He, he's, he's addicted to gambling. I had a friend of mine, Adam Booth, who I told me 80 years ago, a priest told him, if there's anybody ever wipe out your family, hmm? mm. wipe out your family, don't get a gun and go wipe out their family. Just pray to God they can become addicted to gambling. Hmm? <laughs> there is no addiction on the planet like gambling. And those of you out here that either been addicted to gambling or know somebody, then you know what that priest was talking about. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the whole Chicago team was a bunch of thugs um, throwing games and everything. So all at once now, they, they it got out there so they had to investigate. Michael Jordan, right? Mm -hmm. In the process of investigating Michael Jordan, they found out that uh, Jackson, Johnson, mm -hmm. was doing the same thing in their life. Mm -hmm. So when the white folks sitting there, oh my God, this this, this will kill basketball. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So this, here's what we do. Let's make a deal, whether they like it or not, that they get out of basketball, then the investigation stops. You know what I'm saying? And then he also said that someone told him that if you gamble, to be a gambler is like the worst thing because, yeah, man, it's like a drug or an addiction that, that, that's, that's like worse than being on drugs or something. You know what I mean? So, Michael Jordan could have, uh, Gambled his life away and, and and became broke and he was probably living in his car and then you see that his uh his long term wife for seventeen years that he was married to they she got a divorce. For Michael at Juanita Jordan entered the paperwork for a divorce at the Lake County Courthouse in Waukegan today. Within the last few minutes, we received this statement from attorneys who represent the couple. It reads, Michael and Juanita Jordan mutually and amicably decided to end their 17-year marriage. A judgment for dissolution of their marriage was entered today. There will be no further statements. Clearly, the couple wants privacy. Theirs has been a marriage that has largely been shielded from the prying eyes of the press over the years. A significant achievement considering Michael Jordan's local, national, and international celebrity. Having said that, the couple's marriage, of course, made headlines on a couple of occasions, including in January of 2002 when Juanita filed for divorce. The papers were later with 
withdrawn as the couple pledged to work on their relationship. Michael has, of course, been dogged by demons, including concern about a gambling problem. The Jordans have three children. In 2002, when Juanita first filed for divorce, Michael told reporters that work was a great distraction from his personal issues. That's when he was with the Washington Wizards. Of course, that relationship also came to an unhappy end. We should mention that an attorney we talked with uh, told us today that when a couple files for disillusionment of marriage, the moment the judge uh, essentially accepts that, the marriage is over and the divorce immediately takes effect. Live in the newsroom, Ben Bradley, ABC 7 News. Karen? All right. And then all of a sudden he get married again. And, and that's kind of like crazy to me because like if you just, you just married for 17 years, wow. Why would you jump back into another situation? But that's none of my business. I don't care, you know what I mean? But if that was me, I would never, I'd just be single for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Just, you know what I mean? Just, be, uh, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, let's continue with the questions. You said that Dick Gregory was an old, Comedian full of lies. I know people sitting in here know. Hold up. He said, I know people sitting in here now have done more for the humanity than 98% of all black and white football player athletes and entertainers. Do you think that's a truthful statement? The same nigga who said he was poisoned with radiation cancer and something and he went to some foreign place, drank the water, and was cured. Oh, yo said a lot of shit that I'm not trying to read. <laughs> he said a lot of shit that I'm not trying to read. But, you know, if you want to, you can check these out. Hold on. Somebody said something crazy. I believe there's a lot of athletes and artists that did in the public think they're alive. See? They ain't the only ones that think crazy, yo. There's a lot of people that think crazy like me sometimes, yo. You know what I mean? Is this brother sneaking on his bathroom break to post a YouTube video? Yes. Oh, oh, I did. <laughs> no, I'm not sneaking, nigga. I'm at work, as you can see. Yeah, man, I went outside to do this shit, so little incidents like that won't happen in the midst of my videos or that will happen all the time and my shit get interrupted you know what I mean but that's why I went outside in the hallway and then go into the bathroom you understand yeah man what else is somebody else saying I can't believe people be taking this man seriously people only listen to him because he's an old head for false wisdom and knowledge you don't know that nigga shut up Niggas always talking shit. The 1978 film The Boys from the Brazil talks and shows how to clone. Check it out. Alright. I might check that shit out. If it's outdated and it look crazy, I ain't checking nothing out. Yo, I need some modern, you know, up to date with some effects and graphics, you know, CG and all that stuff, you know, in my films and stuff like that. I need, I need, I need a new series to watch that's like Spartacus or something, yo. You know what I'm saying? And that's just, I need something hard, yo. You know, I want to make my own movie, yo. I think I need to start a fun me for the movies that I want to make and watch. He said, yep, I kind of feel the way. How does Mike have all that money and doesn't get the gather with all the blacks with money to do the same? Great enough for our purposes. Damn shame. All right. With that. I be thinking like these multi-millionaires, y'all, the spotlight is on them, you know what I'm saying? And they are like a radar, it's not like a big target is on them, you know what I mean? So they kind of like, kind of like iffy, like, yo, it's all about me, Everybody, everybody's after me, everybody's after my money, and that's their mentality a lot of times, so they kind of like hesitant to, to, you know what I'm saying, spend their wealth with other people because they feel as though, you know, people are after their wealth and their money and they're kind of hesitant to, to, to look out for them, for the others because, you know, it will take the spotlight off of them and 
A lot of people like the spotlight. You know what I mean? And God, every nigga got the spotlight and they ain't gonna be special no more. And that's what I be thinking. You know what I mean? So that's why they ain't even necessarily doing what they can do. They gonna look out for their family. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing, you know what I'm saying? Like with our jobs and stuff like that. They can give you 60-40. They ain't go 60-40 with you. But they don't go 60-40 with you. They go 90. <laughs> they go 90-10. Or 92-8.8 or some shit. 92-8. You know what I mean? Or something crazy like that. You know what I mean? They don't give you a fair wage. They give you, you know, just enough for you to come back. You know what I mean? And seek for more. You know what I mean? And that's just the society that we live in. We live in a capitalistic society. So, therefore, you know what I mean? That's what you're supposed to expect. As long as you into capitalism, people are going to capitalize off of the situations that you're in. You know what I mean? And that's just the society that we live in. They'll say, I believe Oprah is cloned, and I also believe that's why they killed Jordan's father because they knew he was, uh, he would know the difference, and they couldn't let him, his black wife, and him stay together. They're not the only ones cloned either. Well, I don't know. I don't want to get too deep in the subject where those old motherfuckers want to chase after me and I become an enemy of the state and shit. His dad was a sacrifice. I don't know about all that. You know what I'm saying? Sacrifices are ate most of the time. People just don't sacrifice and don't eat it. You know what I'm saying? And if they eating, if they into cannibalism, that's, that's crazy. His father was killed. People are being cloned. No need to deny the truth. Hmm. See? You be, you be seeing a whole bunch of crazy stuff, yo. Yeah, you know, I ain't the only one that think these things. That's crazy, ain't it? Yo say they killed Jordan's father and try to blame it on the gambling problem and the mafia. All that shit is fixed. I don't get into no mafia shit. So, that's the end of that conversation. Jordan is dead and was cloned. Some of y'all might know, but I don't know personally. You know what I'm saying, like I said, I don't know anybody that's famous. I don't know no millionaires and none of that stuff. I got a regular nine to five job, you know what I mean? And right now, I'm just chilling, you know what I mean? And, and just entertaining y'all with these conversations. And uh, one, of the new Adidas commercial that shows an NBA player. I forgot his name. Another shows him walking towards a group of men that look exactly like him. Like they were cloned of him or, rep or replacements. He throws his hoodie on while walking into the group of them. Walking as if he wants nothing to do with them. He then makes his way out of the group then lift his head to the sky I feel like this was a subliminal for something serious I can't tell most of these celebs are clones they might not know it or well any shit I could do I don't know y'all but I was going online and I was looking at Michael Jordan right and and I was watching on NBA TV the other day, and they showed Jordan talking about the ceiling is the roof, right? The greatest to ever play the game, Michael Jordan! Thank you very much. It's always great to come home. It's a great welcome. 
I appreciate the, the hospitality once again to be back home. In the 30 some years that I've been away from the university, I've learned a lot about business and about, about life. And I come back as a businessman to say, I'm happy to extend the Jordan brand relationship, not only for the game of basketball, but for the game of football. I am a diehard Carolina fan, no matter what sport is being played with UNC on his chest. I am extremely proud in terms of what Coach Fedora has done for the football team, and I think bigger and better things are about to happen. So with that note, I want to welcome Coach for all the, the, the hard work and the dedication he's done for the football team and a lot of the players here tonight. I wish you guys nothing but best. The ceiling is the roof. Let's make it happen. Let's keep moving forward. Congratulations. And I wasn't really watching and I was just listening. And I was listening and I was like, hold up, y'all. I don't sound like no Jordan. You go anywhere, maybe outside the country, and not be recognized. I used to. I used to go to Paris a lot because Paris was a place that you know, I could just walk on the streets, I can sit out and have dinner or have lunch or whatever, and people never really paid attention. Did you feel a great deal of freedom? Oh, I, I love to do that. I just stay outside out there. I wouldn't want to go inside at all. I just love sitting out and watching people. Michael, um, you really do seem very normal, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I try to be as normal as possible. Jordan has always pursued normalcy like a championship ring. I always felt that I was going to be a bachelor. One would marry me and you know, I'd end up doing my cooking, my dishwashing. You know, these are things that I should do at home because we had chores to do at home. You're like a poster kid for um, clean living. True. Now, some of those things have changed. I don't do them now as often as I've said. But I I'm, you I'm, don't vacuum <laughs> anymore. If I make a mess, I will. You right. know, I will if the maid's not coming today or, you know, soon. And it's a mess. I mean, I, I'm a tidy person. I, I don't like to have a dirty home or, you know, an uh, untidy situation. You know, Jordan got a deeper voice, you know what I'm saying? He got the southern sound. But that tone of that deep, uh, yeah, uh, Michael Jordan, yeah, I'm playing for the Chicago Bulls, you know? That deep, deep tone wasn't there, yo. And I was looking at him like, hold up, yo, is this dude suspect, yo? As I was looking at him, like, yo, this dude might be suspect, yo. Talking about, yeah, and the, and, and the ceiling is the roof. <laughs> yeah, you know I man. And I was just like, hold up, yo. That's suspect, yo. Sad. But I don't know, though. We can, you know what I mean? Yes, Michael Jordan is clone. He's been dead for years. Just look at old pics of him and compare the two and see his, he's been replaced. And when you look at them Hanes commercial when he was with the uh, with the Caucasian dude and they was talking about the bacon neck, right? Oh. Wow, that guy's really staring over here. Must have sold him some carpeting or something. Mike, check out his bacon neck. Bacon. Sir, lean forward and show Michael Jordan your collar. Oh, see how it's all curled up like bacon in a pan? See how bad this dude looks? What's that? Thank you. Okay. Not us though, buddy. I lay flats. We're like twins. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. No, we're not. Yeah. He was looking kind of funny in that commercial, kind of like, I thought it was just because they was airbrushing him or, you know, putting some makeup on him, you know what I mean? But now that I think about it, he was kind of funny looking. <laughs> hey, yo, I'm entertaining, y'all. I'm, I'm, yo. This is funny to me. Said, yo, Smokey passed the 10th floor. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Gucci man. You, you lost me right there. I don't know what that means. 
know what that means, yo. Said, man, what are you talking about? Nigga, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. L listen, listen, and you will understand and comprehend. The problem with a lot of you dudes is because you don't listen. You think you know, but you don't know. You need to listen and comprehend what a nigga is saying. All right. If he died, who filed the lawsuits in Chicago in 2010? Sure, looked like him to me. I didn't know anything about no lawsuits. Like I say, I don't know Michael Jordan. I'm saying off of what Dick Gregory said. Remember that. I said Dick Gregory said this. I didn't say I said it. I don't know Michael Jordan. All right. I'm just talking about someone was asking a question on Facebook. And then I remembered that Dick Gregory had said this when I was watching the Dick Gregory doc, um, you know, his little speech or his entertainment joint that he was doing here in Baltimore. You know what I mean? Michael was living in his car before he died. Please. Like I said, it's not impossible. He had a gambling problem. And what happened if he betted everything he owned and lost? It's possible. Y'all tripping. The ghost still alive. Nigga, do you know that nigga personally? Did you see him? Did you do you got an autograph? You don't know what the fuck you talking about. Child Millionaire said that he you know I mean Jordan be smoked weed. <laughs> Keep in mind, when I used to stay in Chicago, a lot of y'all know about I used to stay in Chicago, <clears throat> the people that I used to stay with, they used to tell me all the time that Michael Jordan is bad, man. He just be smoking weed, cursing all day. I didn't believe it. I was like, no way, no way, not Michael. You know what I'm saying? Because the image that he portrayed. So I guess Michael Jordan and Dick Gregory are kicking it now. Maybe, motherfucker. I don't know. I like to be at least one piece valid, irrefutable evidence. Back up these clone claims. Everyone's clones, right? Beyonce, Oprah, Michael Jordan, who's real? I like just one piece of irrefutable evidence. Just one. This is just like Bigfoot. No real proof. Just a bunch of claims. You need to stop it. Focus on the state of your souls. Generational wealth. Changing humanity. In small positive ways. You can feed homeless persons. Go clean your neighborhood. Something. But stop. Wasting time. Doing around claims. No one can prove. Motherfucker go up. You, you was nosy. You just wanted to see what the fuck I had to say. Now you want to be heard. Okay, we heard you, motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't mean to talk to you in that manner. I, was, I took it too far. I, I didn't mean to call you motherfucker. I'm sorry. You probably never did nothing like that in your life. But we all come out of women. So that shit was kind of bad at what I said. But Dick Gregory was definitely one of a kind. He was smart. A real, as real as they get, he was Dick Gregory all day, every day, and wouldn't change no matter who wanted them to. Yeah, I just used to just trip off of Dick Gregory, and I and I, um and I dig Dick Gregory because he he was hanging out with. Uh, you know, the greatest thing happened to me was one day I was sitting there in Georgia, and all of a sudden. My mind was just like a light switch, you know, because I could tell the moment yes. that my mind started clicking. Mm. And I'm out, I'm out Howard, yes. you know, and the greatest thrill in the world. I mean, you wouldn't get a better thrill mm. than just learning how to think. Right. And so, you know, when we are, you know, here tonight listening to what what Dick was saying, it was serious. It was serious. And you know, the thing about it is, he, if he came back and went to an academic classroom and gave all of us pen and pad, and then began to do as lawyers do, and that is try to figure out what the legal issues are. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was doing. The whole night was dealing with legal issues. And 
you know, because he says it in such a fluid and funny way, you know, a lot of times we miss the point. And that's the sad part about it because you really have to listen to him two or three times. And you might get the point. You know, but this was absolutely a great lecture. To really have, you know, dick around. Now I know I've said a few things, and this is important. Four thousand years ago, when the white man was in caves, our people gave the world jurisprudence. Yes. When the white man was in caves, and in that jurisprudence was the law, of wills, and trusts. Yes. And the purpose of the law, of wills, and trusts is not to squander the legacy of the deceased. Come on. That's the purpose of yes, the law. Yes, yes. And so, you know, a lot of times, I've been attacked, but I know it's real. You know, if we don't preserve Dick, and we don't continue the legacy, then when he does finally come to rest, it's going to be a slave burial. It's going to be a slave burial. Because all that he has given us we would never have understood the process of how he's doing. And that's what's important. You know, because, as Vic said, if overnight we constantly started thinking and began to think, it was going to be over. Because, you see, we are in a world of trading places. This is a matter of stolen identity. Yes. They're us and we're them. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Right. With Alton Maddox and, and, and um, you know, Dr. Amos Wilson and Dr. John Henry Clark, you know what I'm saying? He was part of the clique. And that's, you know what I'm saying? And I respect them dudes real heavy, and, you know? And that's what I'm saying. He was, he was part of the crew. And he was an old dude. And I respect my elders. So. I don't think you crazy. I just I just was tripping off of it, you know what I mean? And this is a good conversation. So let's 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 continue. Why the hell am I watching this? You ain't got no life. That's probably why. Mustafa Ka See like these niggas that be talking this shit, right? I bet you they don't even exist. Look at this shit. The fuck he be watching. Boxing tip. Shower. Oh, that's what she calls. Wild animals. Zero subscribers. See, like, this is a fake account. So when people start fasting, Dr. Sibby, workout, country, oh, this ain't no black dude. Instrumentals. Hey, yo, I got instrumentals if you want some, and some instrumentals. I do, I do it all. But yeah, yo. Michael Jordan died. Yeah, he could have. We have a black man about 50 years of age. He says that a possible heart attack in his condition is critical. It's a possible 1054. It's the Michael Jordan. I repeat, it's the Michael Jordan. And we need to help him. He looks very bad, people. We need to help him out. I still love this man. And the fact that he has passed away is absolutely mind boggling and a travesty. Out front to the man, Michael Jordan. Jordan up top, fake left, go right. He's there, lay it up, score it easily. Wow. Stockton inside of Carmelo, they double it. Jordan knocks it away from him. Jordan's got it. The Bulls can win it right here. The Bulls can win it. Unbelievable. 16 seconds left. Bulls down one. Michael against Russell. 12 seconds. 11. 10. Jordan. Jordan a drive. Hangs. Five. Yes! He scores! The Bulls lead 87-86 with five and two tenths left. And now, they're one stop away. Oh my goodness. 
put out something I'm looking at. See, like, I respect people like Terry Stringer. I think he was old and senile. See, like, and he show his face. Because he's a human being, you know? You see that? You see his face. You see him? Yeah. He said, you believe that that, hold on, let me read it again so y'all know I can read. He said, you believe that, and you're dumber than he is. <laughs> Yo, let's try shit on me real fast. Man, fuck you, man. You know I care what you think. I told y'all that man was an agent. Nobody thinks that. He said Michael Jordan died broke intentionally. Of course he did because he know niggas was gonna sit there and not question the information they received. They was, <laughs> that's why he said, y'all punk sons, he don't respect we black people slave minded. Damn, that sound like a woman. See, she's mad. But I ain't even no woman, huh? Sound like a man that was raised by a woman that was mad. Dope cars, Pisces, classic joint, old school. I, mean, I ain't gonna say he don't exist. Nah, I mean, you got a right to your opinion, brother. Oh, NBK Meltdown. Yo said, yo from Baltimore, yo me too. Rest in peace, Dick Gregory. I'm a new subscriber. This Michael Jordan shit is interesting. Yeah, I think so too. I'm over here in the Woodlawn area. Yeah, I mean, and um, what up? Get with me. Yo say, uh, you're a terrible YouTuber, man. So how do you become a good YouTuber? Uh, explain that. And I bet you this person is not even a real person. Like I said, phony, phony accounts, you know, and people want to talk to me, but can't even show who they are, and, and I ignore, I usually ignore people like that, you know what I'm saying, because they wouldn't even say nothing to me on the streets, for real, they would just walk past, let's continue, <laughs> this guy say, Krypton, Kryptonite 10, right, he say everything, I mean, everything is a lie, Jesus is real. Well, I guess you don't be really watching my videos on here. Yeah, man, and all my um, little topics I got about biblical texts and stuff like that. Maybe you need to check that out. Yeah, man, especially the one about the confessions of deceit about Apostle Paul. But we talking about Michael Jordan right now. We get into that on a whole other date. All right, this person, Fitzgerald Gilmore, says, when was the last time you seen him with a family member? He never had children. When he came into the NBA, his mother and father was visible, very visible in his life. The same for many others. Notice that they never acknowledge family in no kind of way anymore. It's always just them. One of the newest dead clones is Serena Williams, the real Serena Williams, would have never married no white man. Venus may be gone as well. The clone cannot play tennis. This is your tub YouTube video showing the, re the, the clone trying to play tennis and looking like she just came into the world. But he has a valid point. I don't know about no Serena Williams. There's nothing like that, but... Every time I do see a Michael Jordan documentary, they be having Phil Jackson. He told me once that when he walks through a crowd, even if he appears not to be looking at the people in the crowd, he can feel every eye on his skin. And he said it's like a burning feeling. Until I'm alone again, I feel the burning, those eyes looking into me. If you're Michael Jordan, and you're that celebrated, and that good, the phone rings a thousand times a day with people who have ideas that they say are good for you. This is going to be really good for you. It's not good for you. It's good for them. He said those two and a half hours on the court every game night is the most peaceful time of my day. He said because it's like there are invisible walls around the court. It's the one part of my day that no one can touch me. 
No one can come up and ask for an autograph. No one can pitch a business deal. I'm meditating out there. On or off the court, Jordan guarded his carefully tilled public image. He has an awful lot of clout. And I've heard from more than one person that if you step outside the bounds of, of how he wants you perceived, then, then the word will get to you. We wrote a story about him in Sports Illustrated when he was trying to play baseball. And I think the, the story was fairly sympathetic, but the, the cover was Baggett Michael. And he, to this day, will not talk to this magazine. Whenever Michael appears in public to come down from his hotel room, he is always dressed immaculately because he knows that there are people in the lobby that maybe are going to get a 20-second glimpse of Michael Jordan for once in their life. And he wants to portray a certain image and a certain class. I'm very image conscious, probably more than I should be because I think it really prevents me from being the fun person that people behind closed doors know I am. Jordan said, a lot of times, I'll dream I'm a bad alcoholic. And in the dream, I can't stop drinking, and I'm embarrassing myself, and I'm going to lose everything. He says, and I wake up from that dream in a sweat. He knows that one slip up, one mistake, can throw it all away. And I think he lived in terror of that for a very long time. I'd be like, yo, what happened to the people he grew up with, like, his homeboy from high school and his cousins and you know what I'm saying? They always got somebody else talking about, yeah, I knew Michael Jordan for years. <laughs> like, that's crazy to me. That's a that's a that's a valid point right there. Uh, you pointed out. But it's kinda of funny. But thank y'all for uh responding to my joint. It was kinda of entertaining and um Continue, 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 continue. But have a good day. Sincerely for me. Yeah, man. This is the most views I ever got in my life. And it's kind of funny to me. I hope Michael Jordan ain't going to be offended if he's, if he's not cloned. But if he is cloned, he's going to respect the fact that I brought it out. It will bang in a bar, it will bang in a car Just that don't crack a sound that all your niggas love As long as you're here, no, then I don't turn off the broads I done did my job, I done did my job Yo, my album is the bomb Using words I used to say Before the day you were born Women out tonight and they got it going on Shorty ass got fat from, from eating all that corn Or it might be surgery, I think she's doing porn But that's none of my business, so carry on and Yo, that night is splendid, all these beautiful women If she show me what she got, then she gon' get it I'm just trippin', got my wife on my side, I'm just spittin' I create the theme and the scene that you envision I need the cream to fulfill my dreams So I hop on my beats and just do my thing And I'll be trippin' off how fast they get with it I'll be trippin' off how fast they get with it I'll be trippin' off how fast they get with it I'll be trippin' off how fast they get with it. Get with it, get with it, get with it.